So check this out. In every organization I've worked for, Citrix issues has always given me most of the headaches as far as troubleshooting and fixing problems. It always seems to be slow or let like the apps not loading and it's just an overall pain. Well, let's talk about a vulnerability you may have to deal with in your organization. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I got some more cyber news. And today I want to cover a Citrix server vulnerability that could affect about 15K servers. Let's check it out. So this article is on Bleeping Computer and it was put up a couple days ago. And as you can see by the title, it says over 15K Citrix server vulnerable to CVE 2023-3519 RCE attack. And shout out to Bleeping Computer for putting this information out there. Uh, I just wanted to cover it because like I said, I've ran into uh, Citrix, you know, pretty much in every organization that I've worked for. It's always this obscure network that's a little harder to get to and it's always running a little slow or you run into issues, you get a lot of tickets about it. Uh, it's it's crazy, it's just a, a weird, and, and to me, I've always wondered like why you don't just put some of these apps on the regular network, you know what I'm saying? So we don't have to deal with this, but whatever. Citrix has its place, it has a lot of good things, you know, with it as far as like the apps and things that you can run in Citrix. But for the tech guys like me, it's always been a pain. But anyway, let's go down and cover this article. It says thousands of Citrix Netscaler ADCs and gateway servers exposed online are vulnerable to attacks exploiting a critical remote code execution bug, so RCE, that was previously abused in the wild as a zero day. Now it says security researchers from the Shadow Server Foundation, which is a great uh, foundation. I've done some research on them in the past, but it's a nonprofit organization dedicated to enhancing internet security, revealed this week that at least 15,000 appliances were identified as exposed to attacks leveraging the flaw CVE 2023-3519. And this is based on the version information that they could pull. And I'm sure they did a scan in order to pull like version information from these servers online. And that's where they're getting that number for, for about 15,000. And I'm sure it's more because they probably couldn't get the version information for all of them. But let's see right fast. It says we tag all IPs where we see a version hash in a Citrix instance. This is due fact that Citrix has removed version hash information in recent revisions. Okay, so that may be why it could be more than 15K right there. It says, thus safe to assume, in our view, all instances that still provide version hash have not been updated and may be vulnerable. So they don't 100% know, they're just going off that version information that they were able to retrieve from the ones they had access to retrieve, retrieve it from, you know what I'm saying? Or they haven't removed, Citrix hasn't removed that, you know, version hash information that you could get, you know, previously. Now it says they also noted that they're also undercounting since some revisions known to be vulnerable, but with no version hash have not been tagged and added to the total numbers of exposed Citrix servers. So yeah, it says it right there. Uh, some of them, they could not get that version hash in order to tag those servers as vulnerable. Now it says Citrix released security updates to address the RCE vulnerability on July 18th. So a little over a week, uh, saying that exploits of CVE 2023-3519 on unmitigated appliances have been observed and urging customers to install the patches as soon as possible. Now it says the company added that unpatched uh, Netscaler appliances must be configured as gateways, VPN virtual servers, so ICA proxy, CVPN, uh, RDP proxy, or any authentication virtual server, the so-called AAA server, to be vulnerable to attacks. And here's a map uh, with the legend, so you can check it out right there. Uh, the higher it goes on this legend right here, that means the more IPs they flag. So the US guy is in red, so they got a whole bunch, and I think that's 4,000 IPs. So yeah, about 4,000 Canada. Well, that's Alaska, obviously part of the US. Uh, but as you can see throughout the country or throughout the world, you can see where they found some vulnerable IPs or at least flag them. And like they said, it could be more. 
Now it says CVE 2023-3519 RCE zero day was likely available online since the first week of July when a threat actor began advertising Citrix ADC zero day flaw on a hacker form. So yeah, that lets you know right there that a lot of these security researchers are monitoring these hacker forms so when y'all put that out there uh all you bad actors or whatever you put those flaws out there you know there are security researchers out there monitoring these forum boards as well and then notifying the organization of it as well as the organizations they they do monitor that stuff now uh bleeping computer has also been aware that citrix had learned of the zero day advertisement and was working on a patch before making an official disclosure so they actually did a good job with that you know what i'm saying as soon as they found out about it uh they started working on some a way to patch it you know yeah they eventually disclosed it but you know they did good by just working on it and not just trying to hide it they they went right to work tried to fix it and released the patch now it says the same day citrix patched two other high severity vulnerabilities tracked as cve 2023 3466 and cve 2023 3467 so that's cool the same day they actually patched something else so that's that's dope uh now the former allows attackers to launch reflected cross-site scripting attacks by tricking targets on the same network into loading a malicious link in the web browser while the latter makes it possible to elevate privileges to get root permissions so that's a bad vulnerability right there man that's crazy now it says while the second is much more impactful it also requires authenticated access to the vulnerability appliances management interface uh, via their IP or subnet IP addresses. Now, CISA also ordered US federal agencies on Wednesday to secure Citrix servers on their network against ongoing attacks by August 9th, warning that the bug was already used to breach the systems of the US of a US critical infrastructure organization. So that's crazy. Someone did get hacked or breached because of this bug. So that's that's crazy right there. Now in June, 2023, threat actors exploited this vulnerability as a zero day to drop a web shell on a critical infrastructure organization, Netscaler's ADC appliance. Now CISA said in a separate advisory published on Thursday, the web shell enabled the actors to perform discovery on the victim's active directory and collect an exfiltrate ad data now that's bad that's definitely bad right there now it says the actors attempted to move laterally to a domain controller but network segmentation controls for the appliance block movement so that's cool they at least they had something in place to prevent that you know at least so that was an interesting article and uh just remember cyber threats you know are not exclusive to any particular organization or industry and as you can see uh, with Citrix, it's across the board. Citrix is used in all organizations, at least all the ones that I've ran into. There's been a Citrix network and they can impact, you know, government, critical infrastructure and businesses of all sizes. Uh, and we must all take cybersecurity seriously and work together to fortify our digital defense. And if you found this video informative, please consider liking and sharing as it helps spread awareness and subscribe to my channel so you can stay informed about a lot of the latest developments in the world of cybersecurity, Linux and technology. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it techy.